The masculine genius question mark? Is there one? Hi, I'm Bobby Angel with Ascension Presents, and today with me is Lisa Cotter, who is a wife and a mother, speaker, and she's an author, particularly of Reveal the Gift, Living the Feminine Genius. Could you define the feminine genius and is there a masculine genius? Because I kept waiting for John Paul II to address that. He never did. <laughs> I know. Whatever. Okay, first of all, that's a loaded question. What is the feminine genius? Right. John Paul II never defined it for us, which was kind of mean of him. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. Like a great philosopher, he just kind of danced around it. But if I had to like boil it down, just make it simple, I would say it's the person-oriented disposition of woman. So it's the unique disposition that we have as women, the unique nature that we've been given, and it's looking at how it is very much oriented towards the other. Is there a masculine genius? Great question. Yes. <laughs> You've got one too. You've got your own version. However, the reason I think we saw John Paul II talk about the feminine genius so much is because he was talking in the 80s and the 90s, and during that time, there's a real push for women to become like men, mm. to like assert themselves like men. And so we saw this rising up in JP too, in his wisdom and his fatherly wisdom was like, oh, that's not going to be good. And so he started to address this. And so that's why we see in particular, like in Mulieris Dignitatum, one of his encyclicals, and we also see in Letters to Women, he really starts to address this to try to affirm to women, no, what you have is unique and it's beautiful. He called it vitally essential. It's needed for this world. And so if you just become like men, we're going to lose a piece of humanity, basically. And so that's why I think he went after that. But unfortunately, that leaves you out without a masculine genius. Womp womp. But I'm so grateful John Paul to spend so much time emphasizing the dignity of women. When I look at my wife, when I look at my daughters, I want them to become who they are as women. Like I don't want them to be like men. And I think we do a disservice when we fall into like the the sayings of the world that it's it's men versus women, that it's an attitude of competition. It's no, it's complementarity. Mm -hmm. It's male and female, male and female are complementary. Yes. It, we don't, it's not a zero sum game. And John Paul II says as well that particularly for men, our fatherhood, we really learn that and go deeper from motherhood, mm. from looking at how, and I can, I can tell you like how my wife has moved from just a being woman into mother, like how that has changed her, how it's changed her disposition, the gifts that she had that were really kind of opened and blossomed when all of a sudden it's this new life you're, you're caring for and taking care of others. It's beautiful and it calls me out and it's instructing me of like, okay, how do I become a dad? How do I become a father? I'm learning that from her motherhood. I think that's part of the beauty of the complementarity too, is that like we have unique gifts that we are what Pope Benedict the 16th would call the privilege sign of. And when we live out those gifts, we draw out the gifts of those around us. For a long time, I thought like, oh, these gifts are exclusive. Like you as a man, you're the one who does these things, X, right? right? Yeah, yeah. And me as a woman, I do these things, X, and that's like full stop. Like there's no like room for me to cross over into your gifts and you can't cross over to my gifts. But what Benedict XVI would talk about what he said is that actually each gender is the privileged sign of different gifts. So for example, there's like mm -hmm. the role of protector, that mm -hmm. again, men, we, we kind of have this innate understanding of like, I want to protect, like I want to be a hero. I want to, I want to protect like the castle. I want to fight the dragons. Like, but that's not exclusively to men to be the protector of the family. Yeah. I think it's, it's something that again, as I can learn how to be more attentive from my wife, as I can learn how to be more attuned to the feelings of her, my children and those around me. It's also like, I've seen women like, no, mama bear can come out. Like mm -hmm. there's absolutely a protector role to the feminine. Right, but I'm doing it like from my own unique genius, right? Yeah. It's yeah. so, like, I think one of the best examples I've ever heard of this idea of complementarity, right? Where we see this idea of these different gifts coming out, like in a masculine way and a feminine way, is imagine that it's like the middle of the night and somebody breaks into your house, right? Like what happens in that moment? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm guessing you are gonna find the most weapon-like thing you can find and you're gonna go confront the bad guy, right? If, if I don't sleep through it, I will be, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jackie's woken you up to I, I alert you. <laughs> grabbing a blunt object and running at the guy. You're running at the guy, but what's Jackie doing, right? Like, she's not like sitting in the bedroom being like, oh, well, I hope the big strong man saves me. Mm. No, she's thinking, where are my kids? Right. Where are the kids in this moment? And she too goes into protector mode and she's run to the rooms of your babies and she's doing whatever she has to do to protect. Yeah. 
And there's something beautiful about that because you're just working from your genius. It's like you're like external, go out there, get the bad guy. Mm. Jackie's like internal, go out there, get the kids, shield them, protect them, take care of them. Mm. And then that complementarity, you two working together, you save the house. I was reading recently like our brains, the brains of men, our right and left hemispheres are a little bit farther apart, which is delightful and there's comedy and the fact that our brains are <laughs> not as connected. But with that comes the ability for more abstract, rational thought of like, this is why we're able to compartmentalize things as men. We put things in boxes. Why we even have a nothing box that we can go into and just mm -hmm. think nothing. It's wonderful. It's, it exists. I've been there a lot. But with that comes also, I have to learn how to see from the feminine of like, yeah, but there's times that that can be too cold or just too logical and it's too like it's a gift to be able to look at something from a distance and analyze it and like if you're a doctor, if you're working in the medical field to see like I have to bracket the personhood and the person in front of me so that I can do this operation. Mm -hmm. However, I can go too far and totally lose the sight of this is a person I'm operating on. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where the masculine and the feminine like we can and should be learning from each other and the, to have a masculine genius doesn't mean that it's set apart from and cannot learn anything from the feminine. Mm -hmm. Well and I love in like kind of the counterpart to that too you think about well JP2 would talk about how women see people with their hearts mm, yeah. right and so like we tend to look at the whole person at, in their completeness and we have a uh, intuition about us that JP2 would frequently talk about how there's just this way the sensitivity in which women can assess a situation and and see and kind of read a person's heart and recognize okay right now this person is feeling sad or this person needs help or we can kind of almost read between the lines like we have this feminine and intuition that really helps to be able to um, see the whole person and, and to help advance their growth. Like that's a big gift of being a woman, part of our maternity that right. whether we have children or not, right, is a part of who we are. This ability to help advance the growth of others and bring people to become who they were created to be, who God designed them and, and desires them to be. I think it's also important to note too, because I think sometimes you can look at this, right? And again, it's like, oh, well, so those are boy things and these are girl things, but that's not what the church is trying to say at all, right, because right. there's ways you're going to express these different gifts to varying degrees, mm -hmm. right? So some women are going to be stronger in certain gifts and maybe not live these other gifts in such an intense way. And that's okay. That's okay. I think there's a good thing in recognizing these are above all, as Benedict called them, they're human gifts. Mm -hmm. But each person is going to live their genius uniquely. And I think we see this really with the saints. Right. You can look at how we've canonized saints throughout our church and in different times and places and you have such vast different expressions and the, just the different way that people live out these gifts gives us that example of how this isn't some tight little box, but this is like a really big playing field in which we get to live and express our masculine and our feminine genius. Right, because even just a quick think of, of some of the, the masculine, the male saints I love, of, of John Paul II to Maximilian Colby to St. Francis to Martin de Porres, like, it's such a widespread of like body types and gifts and introvert, extrovert, like all, all of it. And it's like God wants us to become more of who we are, not a stereotype of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important to understand when it comes to the masculine and feminine genius. Yeah. So I honestly loved your book. I was reading through it, just how you weave in the stories of the saints, your own testimony, and break down the feminine genius. Um, there's something too, as as men, when we're reading like a book, like for women, it, it's kind of a secret. Like we won't admit mm -hmm. it, but it's like, oh, I'm learning secret mm -hmm. behind the scenes tips. Women are complicated. I, I genuinely enjoyed the book. I'm still waiting on the masculine genius encyclical. Maybe mm -hmm. you can write another book in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe from all of us at Ascension Presents. God bless. Sorry, I, now I've like completely lost it. The train of thought? Or? Yeah, I've completely lost my train of thought. Okay. Steaks is having a great special right now. <laughs> if you type in Lisa Cotter for 30% off, you get a monthly shipment of steaks. And now back to the show. I wish that was true.